Hi everyone, this is Anne from the Music Discovery Shop. I think when people learn how to play the harp, one of the pieces they dream of being able to play is Scarborough Fair. So, you know this one, it's, it goes like this. It's beautiful, isn't it? I recently created a new arrangement of this piece, and if you haven't had a chance to listen to it yet, I'll link it up in the cards over here, and I'll put the uh, link in the description. But I thought what we could do today in this video is have a mini lesson. As you know, from my arrangements, I often insert teachable moments into my arrangement. So if you're a new or an improving harpist, then this might be a really nice way for you to develop and finesse some of your techniques. So I would recommend that you go get your harp so you can play along with me and go download the sheet music. So again, that, just, that link is down in the description below. So you can go to my shop, download it. You'll have it in five minutes, put it up on your stand. And if you need to watch the performance video first, you can go do that, of course, and then come back and we'll have a mini lesson on the teachable moments in Scarborough Fair. Let's get started. Now the spot that I'd like to work on in Scarborough Fair is in measure three and four, and there are a lot of things going on in these two measures. So I'm gonna break this down into tiny little bits to help you really study what is going on so you can uh, develop as much finesse as possible for this section. And these two measures ap appear multiple times in the piece. So I think you're gonna get about six for the price of one. Definitely worth the work. So the pattern that I'm talking about, and I'll show it right over here so you can see it, it goes like this. So there are a number of things happening here. So at your harp, what I'd like you to do is first of all, place the group of four. You'll notice that we have a group of four notes to begin. We have finger four on A, B, C, and then your thumb is uh, skipping two strings. So your thumb will be up on F, which is blue. Remember what you wanna be able to do is hover, open, and place as a group. Just remind your fingers how important it is to place in groups, all fingers at the same time. Hover, open, and place. And make sure you've trained your hand to find those four strings without needing to shift. Be sure that you've trained your thumb to place high as opposed to going in low and then shifting into place. Okay, so maybe just do that a few times. Hover, open, and place. So you should be on A, B, C, and thumb on F. Now, so that's great. So easy enough for us to close a four, close a three, close a two, close a thumb. Okay, that's not where the tricky stuff is. This is just a preview. The tricky part is the next group of four. You need to reopen the hand and replace as a group. So it's going to look like this. Did you see what happened there? I had to, when I got to my thumb, actually when I get to my finger two, when I play the C, I'm going to bounce and hover so that I bounce and reopen. And I'm now hovering over the next string. So I'm hovering with my four over the C, my three is over the D, and my two is over the E. When I play my thumb, I play and place. And we're working on placing those three, three fingers at the same time. So this is a really big deal. We're gonna practice that a few times so you can um, develop that, that finesse. So let's go again. We've got A, B, C, thumb on F. So we close A, finger four, close three. Finger two is going to be a bounce and hover. Bounce off the palm of your hand, reopen and hover over E, D, C. Now, when you play your thumb, you'll place those three fingers 
as a group at the same time. And then it's easy to close a two and a three and a four. Are you starting to see that? We'll do this one, once or twice more times, one or, one or two more times for you. So A, B, C, thumb on F, close four, close three, two is a bounce and hover. Reopen over E, D, C. Now F will play and place. And you should now have fingers two, three, and four placed on the next three strings, which are E, D, and C. Let's go again a tiny bit faster. Remember, hover, open, place as a group. Here we go, finger four, three, bounce and hover, reopen over C, D, E. Thumb will play and place as a group. Here we go, place. Okay, now you're probably gonna to wanna to practice that a lot of times to train that technique to be natural and comfortable in your hand. So that's technique number one. Technique number two is in this same little melodic fragment in measure three and four. There's more going on. So here comes technique number two. So we've got our four, our, our four notes placed, the ones that we just uh, we were just on the thumb on F, E, D, and C. The trick here, you can see in measure four, is that you'll need to cross over to play a group of two. So it sounds like this. So I'd like to help you develop a nice crossover. And again, we're going to take this down into the tiniest of little details so you can really study every little movement and, and add more finesse to your crossovers. So hover, open, place over thumb is on F, E, D, and C. Every string is going to have two things to think about, except for your thumb. The first one is easy. You just need to close your thumb. Make sure you close onto the knuckle of your finger two. Now, when you play finger two, your thumb will pop up in the air. Here it comes. Play and pop. See that? My finger two is in the palm of my hand. Thumb is popped in the air. Let's do that again. So my four fingers are placed. Thumb closes. Two plays and my thumb pops. So it's a play and pop. Now, when you play finger three, you're going to tip your hand and the thumb will land on B. So it's play and tip. Let's do that again, because I kind of got a little twang there. So here we go from my thumb, thumb closes. Two is play and pop. Three is play and tip. Now my thumb should be on the B. Okay, this is the tricky position, isn't it? Now, when I play finger four, I'm going to bounce and hover my two. Here it comes. Bounce and hover my two over A. When I play my thumb, I play in place. And then the two plays. How's that for breaking things down into the teeniest, tiniest little components? I know this is hard and it might even be confusing, but go back and do this with me many times and it's going to improve your fluency of your crossovers. Let's do it again. It will get easier and faster, I promise. So place four strings. Your thumb is on F, E, D, and C. First step is close your thumb, easy. Next, we close two and pop the thumb. Next, we close three and tip the thumb. And next, we close four, bounce and hover. Two is now hovering over A. I play my thumb and place A. And now my A finally closes. Let's do it again. Hover, open, place over your four strings, that's C, D, E, F. Here we go. Close thumb, play and pop your thumb. Play and tip your thumb. So you're landing, your thumb should now be on B. Play finger four, that's on the red string. 
you'll bounce and hover. Two is hovering over A. Thumb closes and place A. Now close A. Now I'm going to play this slowly, but I'm not going to say the, the steps. So this will let you um, do this with me at a smart speed and you can think about the steps on your own. As much as I want to say them out loud, I'll try not to. So let's place, ready, play. How'd you do? Let's do it again. Hopefully you're hearing those instructions in your head. I call that the inner Anne. You should have an inner Anne <laughs> reminding you of all of those little tiny steps for your fingers to do. Let's do it again. <clears throat> Hover, open, place. Ready, play. Are you starting to get that? <clears throat> You're going to want to do this many, 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 many times. I usually tell my students, first three tries, not so good. <laughs> the fourth and fifth one, you start to think that, hey, maybe I'll get this someday. And by about the eighth repetition, <clears throat> excuse me, it starts to get easier. Now, let's try putting those two techniques together. <laughs> so we're going to go nice and slow. The first one, remember, is to place your four fingers as a group and you have to replace and do all of our special crossover tips. So it's going to sound like this. I'll do it first so you can watch. Place as a group. Replace. Let's do it together. Place your four fingers, A, B, C, and F. Ready, play. Bounce and hover. There's a lot to it, isn't there? But oh my gosh, if you work on this, this is going to really add finesse, not only to this little part of the piece, but also to other instances where you need to cross over. Now, so for our final practice, let's turn on the metronome and we'll, pra we'll, we'll practice the first two lines together at a nice, smart, slow speed. Now the final tempo for this piece is marked at 112 for your quarter notes, but I want to set the metronome to eighth note beats so that it keeps us really slow and steady. And I've got my metronome here. By the way, did you see Christy Lynn's video on using the metronome. She did a great job of talking about how to use the metronome in your practice. I'll link her video up in the cards. You should check that out later. Now I'm setting my metronome to a 76. Now you might not be ready to do this quite yet, but after you've practiced the piece for a while, then you could come back and practice this with me. So we're going to do two full lines from the beginning. Okay, ready? One and two and three and. So I think that is a really smart way to get started with this piece by breaking down the techniques in measure three and four and then by 
uh, integrating that by practicing the first two measures, or the first two lines rather, very slowly with the metronome. So I hope that get, helped get you started. This is a really fun and beautiful piece to play. I hope you enjoy it. And uh, remember, you can purchase that from my shop and the, dis and the link is in the description below. Um, hop over and watch the performance video for inspiration anytime you like. So I hope that was helpful for you. If you enjoy these mini lessons, please remember to give this video a like, um, comment. I enjoy hearing your comments. Remember to subscribe and click the notification bell so you find it when I post new material. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.